Lesson four, success takes equal parts of chutzpah and humility. In your chemistry lingo, that's the required stoichiometry. Now, just between you and I, I tend to hire graduates from Berkeley over those from Stanford because over time, I found that the Berkeley graduates have a good dose of both chutzpah and humility, while the Stanford graduates specialize in chutzpah. <laughs> the, the key is to maintain a balance between courage and confidence on one side, while retaining a sense of modesty and humbleness on the other side. With 2020 hindsight, and that's actually the only aspect of my vision that's still 2020, I can say that the lowest points of my life were when I became a victim of my own hubris. That is to say, I found that the biggest killer of a good mind is to stick it in a fat head. <laughs> As Aristotle noted in the golden mean, excellence and virtue lie between the extremes. For example, between cowardice and foolhardiness lies bravery. Between reckless squandering of money and miserly penny-pinching lies wise spending. And so, between chutzpah and humility lies success. So, if you ever lose your sense of humility and you need to be regrounded, here's a little tip that I've learned. Listen in while your father-in-law or child describes what you do for a living. I can guarantee you it won't sound like such hot stuff. <laughs> my, my daughter uh, recently joined me for a conference where I was introduced as a titan of the nanotechnology industry. And she turned to me and said, yeah, Dad, you're a real nanotitan. So. <laughs> Lesson five. Failure is merely a dress rehearsal for future success. I've often thought it rather unfortunate that the word failure is a noun, or as you chemists say, a state function. I prefer to think of failure as a catalyst for future success or as an unforeseen reaction with a lot of useful byproducts. Keep in mind, you are already in the top 0.1% to have gotten to where you are today. And so as you move on in life, you will undoubtedly suffer some setbacks. Unfortunately, history has taught us to see and cheer only the last experiment that succeeded and to ignore the thousands before it that failed. We see only the final glory of an athletic victory, but don't see the years of training it took to build the strength, skill, and stamina to achieve that victory. Even if you fail and fall, that's okay, just get up, dust yourself off, and move on. Kipling described this best in his famous poem, If, which if I could remember it, I'd say it here today, but what I can remember is a poem that I learned in kindergarten that's <laughs> done me just as well, and that is, when things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you are trudging seems all uphill, when funds are low and debts are high, and you want to smile, but you have to sigh. When care is getting you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. I have, in my career, I have found that often victory does go to the last person standing, and that when one door closes, another one does open. Take me, for example. I wanted more than anything in the world to go to medical school, and despite numerous and numerous attempts, I didn't get in. But and I was devastated. But fortunately, I, this forced me down a slightly different path. And uh, fortunately, God had his hand on my shoulder, and I landed a job as an early employee of a then largely unknown company called Genentech. And that led me uh, down a slightly different path that allowed me to ca capitalize on my love of medicine and combine it with my, you know, my abilities to bring together the best scientific ideas with the best talent and the best financial backing. And that led me to a career that was even more exciting and even more rewarding than I ever anticipated or could have foreseen. What's more, some of the companies went on to produce products that allowed me to make a greater contribution to the medical profession than I probably would have as a doctor. This turned out to be the best fit for me. And 
It turns out also I can't even stomach watching Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> so in the final analysis, the strength of your character comes not from how you handle your successes, of which I know there will be many. The strength of your character comes from how you handle your failures, of which there will also be many, particularly if you take bold moves. So always believe in yourself, persevere, but be willing to adapt. Well, I think it's time to start handing out the diplomas, and, and I can tell that your family members or friends are anxious to shake your hands and congratulate you. I'd just like to close by saying that I can't think of a better springboard from which to launch a lifetime of achievement than a degree in the chemical sciences from the University of California, Berkeley. When you get your diplomas, they will have a lot of fancy lettered assertions on them, but what they really say is that the person who earned this diploma is starting a career as a leader in the most complex, sophisticated, and important discipline known to man, and that the person who earned this diploma was selected and educated by the world's leading institution teaching that discipline. Each of you has earned that recognition. But, to paraphrase the Bible, to whom much is given, much is expected. You have been given powerful tools with which to address some of the world's greatest problems. We look to you to create abundant and renewable energy sources, to reduce global warming, to avert worldwide starvation, and to increase not only the length of life, but the quality of life for every man, woman, and child on Earth. For this, you have my heartiest encouragement and congratulations. Thank you, and Godspeed.